All right, my friends. So today we are going to be talking about fossils. So a fossil is basically the remains or the leftover bits and pieces of an animal that lived a long, long time ago. But fossils are not always animals. A lot of times we think about fossils being dinosaur bones or old animal bones, but bugs can become fossils, plants can become fossils, even bacteria can become fossils. And so when we think of fossils, a lot of times we think of bones, but fossils can also be things other than bones. And we're gonna talk about some of that stuff today. So there are two main different types of fossils. There are body fossils and then there are trace fossils. And so body fossils are like what you see in this corner picture here, where they are fossils that come directly from the body of the animal or the plant that has been fossilized. So that means bones, that means teeth, that can mean stems if you find a plant that's fossilized, that can mean a shell if you find the shell of some animal that lived a long, long time ago, that is also a body fossil. So the other type of fossils are trace fossils, like this picture that you see in the upper right hand corner here. So trace fossils are not fossils that are actually from the body of the animal itself, but they still are fossils that are evidence that an animal used to exist. And so this can be footprints, this can be underground trails left from some sort of animal that burrowed and wherever they burrowed that turned into a fossil, or it can even be poop from an animal. So I'm gonna show you guys some pictures of different types of fossils and we're going to identify whether they are body fossils or whether they are trace fossils. So this very first picture here is a fossil of a tooth. And so this is a body fossil because it came directly off of the body of some kind of animal. Here is a fossil of a plant. So some sort of plant that got stuck inside of sediment somewhere and fossilized. And so this is also a body fossil because this is the actual plant itself fossilized inside of sediment. And here we have some underground trails that were made probably by some kind of worm. And so since these are the trails that the worm made underground as opposed to the body of the worm itself, that means this is a trace fossil. Right here we have a picture of a shell. And so since this shell was once a part of a body of some sort of animal, this shell is a body fossil. Now here we see what looks like another fossilized shell, but this is not the shell itself. This is an imprint of a shell. So maybe if some sort of shell got buried underground and pressed up against sediment and made some sort of pattern in the sediment and that fossilized, that's what we're looking at right now. So this is actually a trace fossil. And then this right here is something that's actually kind of gross and kind of silly. This is animal poop that's turned into a fossil. And so this is also a trace fossil because it's not the animal itself, but it is something left behind by the animal that shows that the animal existed. And so a lot of times when people think of fossils, the first thing they think is dinosaurs. And while there are plenty of fossils that are from dinosaurs, there are actually fossils from animals and plants and creatures that existed before dinosaurs ever existed and also from after when dinosaurs went extinct. Did you guys know that there were animals and plants and other creatures that existed before dinosaurs? And so the top two pictures here are both of different kinds of creatures that existed before dinosaurs ever existed. And so this fossil in the top left hand corner is something called stromolite. And so this is actually a fossil of ancient bacteria, which is kind of crazy, right? That bacteria can create a fossil like this, but that's what this is. So this is even older than dinosaurs. And then this fossil right here in the top right hand corner is a trilobite. And so trilobites are arthropods. And you might hear the word arthropod and think, 
what is that? But arthropods are basically a part of the same big group as spiders and scorpions. And so this is kind of like a little creepy crawly, but an ancient creepy crawly. And so trilobites are another type of creature that was fossilized before dinosaurs ever even existed, which is pretty cool. And so these Bantu fossils that we're looking at here are both animals that fossilized after dinosaurs went extinct. And so this first picture here in the bottom left hand corner is the fossil of a woolly mammoth, which lived during the ice age. And if you look at the bottom right hand corner here, we have a very old descendant of a lot of our modern day cats that live out in the wild. So if you think of things like tigers, jaguars, cheetahs, this is kind of like the ancient version of that. And so this animal is called a Patriophelis pharynx, which is kind of a hard word to say, but this animal, even though it's really, really old, actually existed after dinosaurs went extinct. All right, so now we're gonna talk about how fossils are made. So fossils are actually kind of rare. Most plants and animals after they die do not end up becoming fossils, which means fossils are actually pretty special and some certain specific things have to happen to them before they can become fossils. So here in this example, we have a dinosaur who's kind of roaming around living his life. And after that dinosaur eventually passed away, his bones got buried inside of sediment. There's a lot of different ways that this could happen. He could have gotten caught in some sort of landslide, or maybe this is ground that built up over time because you have to think the earth is always shifting and changing. Land doesn't always stay the same. But somehow these bones from this dinosaur got buried underground underneath a lot of sediment. After many years of the earth changing and shifting, these bones eventually made it back up to the surface for people to be able to find. All right, so now it's craft time. So for our craft today, we're going to be using some flour, some salt, and also some water. And so you'll probably want to put maybe a placemat down or some sort of newspaper down. You're gonna want a bowl, and then you're also going to want something that you can use to measure out tablespoons. So the craft we're going to be making today out of all the ingredients I just showed you are basically little fossils made out of dough, just like you see in the picture here. And so you can make any kind of fossil you want. You could make a bone shape, you can make a tooth shape, you could make some sort of dinosaur shape or maybe footprint shape, whatever you would like. So I have an example one here that I made yesterday. And so I actually made a fossil of a plant. So I took a leaf that I found outside and I pressed it into this dough here, but then it wasn't showing up quite as deeply as I wanted to. So then I took a pencil and I kind of traced the outline of the leaf so that you could see it a little bit deeper. And then I used a stem from another plant to press into here and here and here to make these little stem lines and then use my pencil again to poke these little holes in the side. And so this is what my plant looks like. And so you can get really creative like with this. You can create a fossil of an animal that's never existed, or you can create a fossil of an animal that does exist or used to exist, whatever you would like to do. You can even take your dog's paw print and have your dog step in your dough, and then you'd have an impression of your dog's paw print, and you could pretend that it's the fossil of some sort of pre prehistoric wolf print. And so the first thing that we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to add flour and salt into our bowl. So here's my bowl. And so you're going to add two tablespoons of your flour. Now I'm going to add one tablespoon of salt. So I'm adding my salt and then I'm going to mix those two ingredients together in my bowl here. And so nothing's really going to happen with them yet. For right now, they're just going to stay kind of powdery. But then when we add the water, that's the thing that's really going to make it turn into dough. All right, so now that that's all mixed up, 
and this is what it looks like we are going to add our water so i am going to pour just for my water bottle here and we are also going to use one tablespoon of water now you may end up needing a little more water of this but start off with just one tablespoon mix it in and then if you feel like your dough is a little too crumbly and it's not sticking together well add just a little bit more water and so i added some water and now i'm going to mix that all together so you can use a spoon to start mixing it together or you can use your hands at first it's going to come out just like a little bit crumbly like if you can see in my bowl here it's a little crumbly it's not really sticking together that well yet but all you have to do is just keep moving it around, keep mixing it. And the more that you mix it, the more it's all going to form together. So now that things have mixed up a little bit more in my bowl, I'm going to go ahead and take it out and I'm going to start kneading it. So that means that I'm just going to squish it in my hand and kind of mix it around. And the more that I do that, the more that it's going to kind of form together so this might take a few minutes it might not immediately turn into what you want it to be but that's okay just keep kneading and keep mixing and so if you notice after kneading for a couple of minutes that your dough is too sticky then you're going to want to add more flour and more salt if you notice that it's too crumbly you're going to want to add more water all right, so now that my dough is the consistency I want it to be, it's not too wet, not too sticky, but also not too crumbly, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of flatten it out like a pancake. I want it to be kind of a circular shape like you see in our pictures here. And so I'm going to kind of flatten it out so that this is what it looks like. And then I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to try to make some footprints in my dough here. And so again, you can use whatever you can think of. So if you've got a little dinosaur toy that you wanna stick in there, or even a Pokemon toy, any kind of impression that you can think of, be creative. Again, you can make up a new animal if you want to, whatever you would like. All right, so now mine has some footprints in it. So I'm gonna say those are some footprints from some humans that lived a really, really, really long time ago. And they were wearing some shoes. And so that's all that you need to do. Now you just need to set it up somewhere where it can dry for a long time. And then you will have your fossil. So now let's talk about where you guys can find some fossils. So if you live in Cincinnati, Lucky you, Cincinnati is actually a great place for you to find fossils, but not necessarily dinosaur fossils, actually Ordovician fossils, which are even older than dinosaur fossils. And so here's a picture, an example of what these times look like that these fossils came from. So this is actually from before dinosaurs existed. And we are gonna talk about what some of these fossils look like now so that you know what to look for and what they used to look like. All right, so when you go fossil hunting, one of the best places for you to look is actually right by streams. So if you ever see a stream that has a bunch of rocks laying right beside it, I would go and check out those rocks and look closely and see if you can find some fossils. So sometimes fossils are just one fossil sitting by itself, but a lot of times they're like what you see in this picture here, a lot of small fossils stuck in the same bigger rock. And so this first fossil that we're going to talk about they are called gastropods. And so gastropods look like this right here. They're kind of these like spirally shell shapes. And so these are actually the shells of basically prehistoric snails. So this is what we think that they would look like, this right here. And this is what to look for now. Our next kind of fossil is a cephalopod. And so cephalopods are kind of like ancient squid. And this is what we think they might have looked like right here in this top corner here. And then we have crinoid. And so crinoid is actually the stem of an ancient sea lily. And so this stem right here is actually what you're looking at when you see this picture right here. 
and said, this is what ancient sea lily looks like. That's crinoid. And then this is bryozoa. So this is kind of like ancient coral reef almost. And so all of these little bits and pieces here that look like teeny tiny little tree branches are actually all little bryozoa that got stuck in the same rock together. And you can see some of them have a really bumpy texture like this one right here. And so these right here is what you're looking for. And this is what they look like now. And then we have the famous trilobite. And so we've already talked a little bit of what trilobites are, but this is what they look like when they're fossilized. And then this is what we think they might have looked like way back in the day. And finally, we have brachiopods, which are kind of like ancient clams. And so this is what you'll see now. They just look like a bunch of seashells stuck in a rock. But this is what we think they might have looked like previously when they were alive. And so Earth is actually not the only place that you can find fossils. You can also find fossils in space. Like this one right here is a meteorite that was found in the Sahara Desert. And this meteorite turned out to be 4.6 billion years old. So basically as old as the entire solar system, which means it's one of the first space rocks that would have been made. And it helped tell us a lot about how space rocks first started forming in the early years of our solar system being made. And so space rocks, really old space rocks, can tell us a lot about the ancient times in our solar system. And so they kind of count as fossils too. And we could maybe even start looking for fossils on Mars because scientists actually think that Mars potentially used to be covered in oceans like you see in this picture here. Mind you, this was billions and billions of years ago. And at the time, Mars was actually a lot warmer. Now the average temperature on Mars is around negative 80 degrees. But back during this time, it must have been a lot warmer for it to have melted oceans instead of ice. And so what scientists think happened is that over time, Mars's atmosphere slowly went away. And as the atmosphere disappeared, there was nothing left to keep Mars as warm as it once was and also to protect its water from being dried out from the sun. So you might be wondering, why do scientists know that Mars used to have water and what does that have to do with fossils? Well, the way that we know or one of the ways that we know is actually because of these things that you see in these pictures here. These are dried out riverbeds that we have found on the surface of Mars. If you see the shape of them, they kind of look like the same shape that rivers look like here on Earth when you go up in an airplane and look down at the river below. And so these, seeing these riverbeds, dried out riverbeds, have helped scientists come to this conclusion, but also so have all of the different rovers that we have sent to Mars. And so we've sent Spirit and Opportunity, we've sent Curiosity, all three of these rovers have helped us figure out that there is a tiny bit of ice water on Mars and that maybe there used to be entire oceans on Mars. And so that is actually why we have sent this robot right here, Perseverance. We sent Perseverance just this year and Perseverance's main mission is actually to find signs of ancient life on Mars. Because if you think about it, if Mars maybe used to have oceans and maybe used to be a warmer planet, doesn't that mean that maybe at some point it could have had life on it? And so even though scientists are pretty confident now that there's no life living on Mars at this moment, they think maybe billions of years ago, there used to be aliens living on Mars. And that is one of the main things that Perseverance is looking for. All right, my friends, well, thank you so much for joining us today to talk about fossils, and we will see you at the next Cosmic Kids. Bye. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are interested in anything else that the Cincinnati Observatory is doing, please check out our website at www.cincinnatiobservatory.org. Have a good day.